Okay, everyone. Um, we are just about ready to get started. Um, just as a reminder, we are recording this um, so that people can feel free to rewatch. And for those that weren't able to make it, um, they can still participate. Um, welcome, everyone. This is your financial aid survival guide. I am Nadia Rogers. I serve as a financial aid counselor and outreach coordinator here in Student Financial Services. Um, we're super excited to have you all here today. Um, we're hoping to really give you kind of a foundation for how to move forward um, managing your finances as a Red Hawk. Um, to start, we'd like to congratulate all of you. We're super excited to have you as part of our incoming class. Um, to begin, we'd actually like to get some audience participation from you all with a quick poll here. Um, and I'm going to pull this up and get us started. Um, so feel free to put just a quick answer. When you think about financial aid, how are you feeling? Um, if you're like me, um, your answer at this point in time would have been, who is confident? I don't know her. Um, we know that finances are super difficult, especially financial aid. It's one of the most difficult processes that you'll go through as a student. So we're super excited to have this opportunity to really work with you and your family and hopefully help you feel a lot more confident by the end. I'm seeing some variation of answers. We've got some somewhat confident, some not confident. Some of you are in the same boat that I was as a student where you're like, who is confident? I don't know her. We've still got a couple people that are answering, so I'll leave the poll open here for just a few minutes. Um, while those people are getting their answer in, I do want to let you know that managing the chat today, I do have one of our senior Red Hawk counselors, Niall Quinn, um, who's joining us. Niall, do you want to give a quick hello? Hi, everybody. Um, I'll be answering your questions in chat, so feel free to shoot them in there. And, um, and yeah, we'll be happy to help you guys out. Awesome. Thanks, Niall. Um, we're super excited to have Niall here with us. If you've got any personal financial aid questions, know that we are available for you to set appointments with us. You can give our office a call. Um, we are going to answer some of the more general questions here at the end, um, but don't feel like you've got to put your question out there in front of everyone in the chat unless you feel comfortable. Okay, so most of us are feeling somewhat confident or not confident. Um, so my hope is that by the end of this, we can definitely um, all reach total confidence, maybe not total confidence, but we'll definitely increase our confidence levels. Um, so to get started here, what you can expect um, as we move forward um, providing you with this survival guide is that we're going to go over student financial services and who we are and what we do. We'll also go over kind of your financial aid offer in depth. We'll talk about the cost of attendance. We'll go over missing documents. We'll give you some important information around billing, your proxy, and your student account center. And then I'll leave you with some next steps so that hopefully you feel super prepared when you get here in the fall. So to start, this is your Red Hawk Student Financial Services team. So it starts with our Red Hawk counselors like Niall, who run our frontline customer service. They're answering phones. They're at our front desk. They're answering that general email box. And they are financial aid counselors. So they're fully equipped and ready to answer any questions that you have around financial aid, work study, and billing. Um, they are your frontline staff members. And you'll work with them closely over the next four to five years. The next step up um, in student financial services is that you have financial aid counselors. Um, so each of you, based off of your last name, have your very own financial aid counselor that's handling the administration of your financial aid. They're looking over your missing documents, and they're making sure that your accounts are ready to go. Um, in addition to those two counseling teams, we also have our student accounts team. Um, they are the money people. They're handling the background processing of payments to accounts. They're managing our online billing center. They're giving you monthly statements. Um, and they really are an essential part to how we function as student financial services. Um, just to give you kind of a super quick hitter of what we actually do. Um, we do all student financial aid. Um, we are the hub for your student accounts. And then we also do work study. So we really are a one-stop shop for all things student financial services. 
one of our key responsibilities um, in student financial services is that we are responsible for producing what's called your financial aid offer. And I know that many of you have already seen this either in My Seattle U or maybe you're looking in your admissions portal. Now that you all are confirmed and admitted students for the upcoming year, we really do encourage you to log into myseattleu.edu backslash student if you haven't already. This really is your hub for all things um, student financial services, but also just around the university. It's where you'll go to register for your classes, um, which I know some of you are getting ready to gear up to do here in just a couple of weeks. Um, so if you haven't logged in, this is a really important site for you to have saved bookmark it in your phone, bookmark it on your computer, um, whatever device you're planning to use, log in and really familiarize yourself with My Seattle U. You should all have an offer letter. Um, if you're not seeing an offer letter in there, we really want to make sure that you're contacting our office um, to make sure that you're squared away on our end. If you're maybe looking at your offer letter and you're only seeing institutional aid, you're not seeing any federal loans or any federal grants that you may have been expecting, it might be that we haven't received your FAFSA or that you haven't filed your FAFSA yet for 2023-2024. Know that you still have time. We want you to file that application. If you have some questions on it, please feel free to contact our office. And the next steps as you're reviewing that offer letter um, is that first of all, we want you to view it. Um, and I can't stress this enough. We really want you to also make sure that you're viewing that in My Seattle U underneath your financial aid portal. Um, something to keep in mind about Seattle University is that we do accept all of your financial aid up front, and that does include loans. So if you're a student that doesn't want to take out loans or maybe doesn't want to take out your full loan amount, in My Seattle U is where you'll want to go to either decline or reduce those loan amounts. And most importantly, and we'll talk about this too a little bit later in the presentation, is that this is where you'll go to complete your financial aid checklist, which will be super important um, getting you ready for fall. As you're looking at your financial aid offer letter, you'll see that it's kind of split up into four main types of financial aid. Um, so that first portion that you'll see is going to be your scholarship. Scholarships are namely based off of merit or skill, um, and they're usually from the university, although some of you do have some private outside scholarships that we know will start rolling in here um, in just a couple of weeks. Some examples of that might be something like the Achievement Scholarship. Um, for those of you that had a sibling or a parent attend SU, you might see the McGoldrick Alumni Scholarship. And for those of you that are, that are Sullivan leaders, you might see that scholarship in there as well. The second type of aid that you'll see is grants. Grants are namely based off of financial need, um, and they can come from federal, state, or institutional resources, um, and they do not require repayment. So those are things like the Pell Grant, the Washington College Grant, Washington College Bound, and also the Red Hawk Grant. Other types of aid that you might see on your financial aid offer are what we call educational loans. For those of you that chose to file the FAFSA, you might see the federal subsidized loan or the federal unsubsidized loan or both. Both of those loans do require repayment um, and repayment starts six months after graduation. On the federal subsidized loan, that loan does not collect interest while you're in school, but the federal unsubsidized loan will collect interest while you're in school. Other types of loans would be like the federal parent plus loan, which will require an additional application from your parents or a federal or a private loan um, from a lender of your choice. Some other types of aid that you might see listed on your financial aid offer would be work study. This is a great opportunity to really um, learn a skill set that will complement what you're learning in the classroom. You might have federal or state work study, depending on your particular offer letter. If you're looking at your financial aid offer and you're not seeing work study listed at all, know that at Seattle U, we do encourage all of our students to work regardless of a work study offering. So work is still an option and all of our students begin at minimum wage, which currently is $18.69. Something that you won't see listed on your offer letter, and that's often a missed opportunity, is outside scholarships. 
Now that you are an admitted student, we encourage all of you to take advantage of using your My Seattle U login to log into what we call Scholarship Universe. So this is an opportunity for you as students to search for outside scholarships in a database that we've created. So we have vetted all of these scholarships. And in the very beginning, when you first log in, you'll do what is a super long questionnaire, but essentially will match you for potential scholarships that you can apply for. In February, um, to prepare for your sophomore year, you'll also have an opportunity to apply for additional scholarships at Seattle U. So that's something that you'll want to familiarize yourself with. Um, and the time is now. So there is still an opportunity for you to be applying for outside scholarships and to receive them. Apart from Scholarship Universe, you can check with your employer, your parents' employer, if you've got a place of worship, if you're a part of any organization, sports or clubs, and then also College Board. Those are great places to get started um, to take a look at what opportunities might still be out there for you for financial aid. After we talk about financial aid and students review their offer letter, the very next question that we get is, Okay, so I know how much aid I got, but what does that mean in terms ah, okay. of You don't know payment? the, I don't think so, if you need the and so dates, to kind of break this I down. I think it's the name, uh, you need only, okay, you need to so print quick your pause. If you're not you on your right contract. now, if you could you have to put yourself. the paper in. You need that for me, mm -hmm. you need the doctor order, mm -hmm. you need the, and that's it, you know. Okay. Not, not delegation. You're not on mute so. right now. If I could have you mute yeah. yourself. Because it's my facility name. Perfect. Thank you so much. So as, the next set of questions that we get is really around cost and payment and what that looks like for a student. So to really break this down for you and give you kind of a foundational understanding of what this looks like when you attend Seattle U is that we break up your cost into direct and indirect cost. So around mid-August, when you all first receive your first tuition bill for SU, it will only include your direct cost. So those are costs that we directly bill to you as a student. Your indirect costs are expenses that we want you to be aware of, but that we won't necessarily provide you with a bill for. Altogether, that will give you your total cost of attendance. What this looks like in a dollar amount um, are these amounts here. So the things that you'll see included in your bill will be things like tuition, your mandatory fees, such as the wellness, technology, matriculation, and the new student orientation fee. Um, you'll see your actual cost for housing, depending on what you selected on your housing application, and you'll see the actual cost of the meal plan you selected. If you choose to opt in to one or both of the federal loan programs, you'll also have some loan fees that you'll pay in addition to that. So the total estimated direct cost or what we would call our sticker price is 69,551. On top of those direct fees, things that we want you to keep in mind are things like books and supplies, transportation, or any personal expenses that you might accrue just from being a student. That, however, is our sticker price. So it doesn't actually tell you what you as a student will pay. To get what we call your net price, which is the cost that you'll pay after your financial aid, we encourage all of you once again, and I promise you if you hear nothing else that Nadia says today in this presentation, I want you to hear that you've got to log in to myseattleu.edu backslash student. It really is the hub for especially everything finance related. Um, and in your financial aid tab, you'll actually be able to view what we call the out-of-pocket cost worksheet, which will outline all of your costs, your estimated cost, and then also your total financial aid and provide you with an estimated net cost. This is the closest net cost that we can give you before we actually bill you for tuition in mid-August. Um, so I definitely recommend having you take a look at that um, as we get closer to fall. If you're looking at that total, if you're looking at your offer letter and you're wondering, okay, we still have 35 or $45,000 left to pay out of pocket, 
how do we go about covering that? Know that you do have options for covering those out-of-pocket costs. For some of you, that's going to be tapping into a family resource. Maybe you're planning to use um, veterans aid or assistance like the GI Bill or Yellow Ribbon, but you're not sure how to start that process at SU. Um, we definitely recommend reaching out to our office so that we can get you started on paperwork sooner rather than later. Maybe that's that your family has a 529 or a college savings plan that you plan on using. Um, and the same thing applies. You'll want to reach out to that account holder and get started on any documentation that they'll need before we start the billing process mid-August. Maybe it's that your family is going to participate in one of our interest-free payment plans, which allows you to take your quarterly cost and split it up into smaller equal payments. Maybe you already have secured or you're planning to secure some additional outside scholarships. It might be that your parents are going to apply for the Parent PLUS loan, which they'll do after July 1st, or it might be that you're going to start exploring private educational loans, which will also happen after July 1st. Once you've developed a finance plan with your family, so you know what family resources you're going to use, you know that you're going to sign up for a payment plan, or you know what loan you're going to be tapping into, the next thing that you're going to need to know is how you can physically make payment. So if you're planning to make any sort of payment to SU that's non-financial aid related, you've got tons of options for how you and your family can choose to pay. Um, the number one option that students choose is to pay online um, because it's quick and easy. We do recommend that students use what's called an electronic check or an ACH op option rather than putting in a credit or debit card number to avoid <coughs> the processing fee. That processing fee is 2.75% on each payment that you make, so it can add up rather quickly. So the electronic check option is really the cheapest and best option when paying online. You can also pay in person and visit our Red Hawk Service Center. Um, it might even be Niall that's at the front desk when you come to make your payment. We're available during the academic year, Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, keep in mind that we do have on another part of my skin. credit. We do not accept credit cards or cash at our window, um, but we do accept personal checks, money orders, cashier checks, traveler's checks, and we can accept debit cards at the window as well. For those of you that are interested in using check payments or maybe you're requesting from funds from a 529 or college savings plan, keep in mind that all check payments must include the full name of the student and the ID number. Um, if you're planning to drop it off or to mail it, try and have that done two weeks prior to the billing deadline. Um, that'll definitely help us get the check posted well in advance so that no one is worried about whether we received the check or not. Um, if you are thinking about how to pay and you're looking at your financial aid offer and things are not adding up, um, things seem still a little out of reach for where you know your family finances are. Um, it might be because there have been changes in your family finances that we're unaware of. Um, the FAFSA for this year is based off of 2021 tax information, and a lot can change for families since 2021. Um, so if you fall under a special circumstance or an unusual circumstance where you've had changes in your income, changes in your employment status, maybe you're paying high out-of-pocket medical expenses that we're unaware of, we definitely want you to reach out to our office sooner rather than later so that we can work with you to make sure that we have the best financial aid offer in place for you. So you've taken care of your offer letter, you know how you're going to pay. There are some additional steps that we need you to take in order to be ready for fall. Um, something that's often missed by students is, are missing documents for financial aid. So for those of you that have filed the FAFSA or maybe have some institutional aid, um, there might be additional paperwork that we need you to complete. The best way to know whether or not you've been selected to complete missing documents is to be logged into My Seattle U and to view your financial aid checklist and to be checking your, my, your Seattle U email address regularly. Um, this is the formal mode of communication, not only for our office, but for every office on campus. So it's super important that you are checking that email. It is where we will tell you that you have missing documents. It's where we'll provide you with instructions to complete those missing documents. And it's how we'll communicate with you, communicate with you from here on out. 
all of our missing documents are available to complete online in hopes that that is a seamless process for you and your family. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Um, some of the most common missing documents that students are asked to complete are documents such as verification. Um, so students that are submitting a financial aid appeal for special or unusual circumstances or students that are selected by the federal processor are asked to complete verification, um, which is completing an online form and also providing some tax information for both the student and the parent. Um, those of you that have been selected for verification, you've already received instructions to your Seattle you email address as well as instructions are available in your financial aid checklist. I know many, many, many of you have already submitted your verification documents. So we thank you in advance for being so on top of it. If you've got any questions on verification, since there are so many moving parts, please feel comfortable contact, contacting our office, meeting with a counselor and getting those questions answered well, well in advance of fall so that we can make sure that you're all prepared and good to go. For those of you that are participating in one of the federal loan programs, um, you also have some additional paperwork that will need to be completed, whether you choose to accept the direct unsubsidized or subsidized loan. Um, you'll have two documents that you'll need to complete. The first will be the master promissory note, and the second will be entrance counseling. Both of those are available in your financial aid checklist, and you've also received an email letting you know that we need you to complete those before fall. One last document that I really want to touch on is the Washington State Directive. This document is often missed in the missing document section, but for those of you that are Washington State residents and receiving Washington State aid, be that the Washington College Grant, College Bound, the Bridge Grant, or the Passport Scholarship, you are required to complete the Washington State um, aid directive, um, and we'll need that completed well in advance of fall as well. Um, so be sure that you're checking your SU email and that you're reviewing your financial aid checklist and that you complete this form before bills come out mid-August. Part of this guidebook is to make sure that we prepare you as much as possible to be a Red Hawk in the fall when it comes to your finances. Um, a big part of that is making sure that you know how to maintain your eligibility for financial aid as a Red Hawk. To be eligible for financial aid, students must maintain satisfactory academic progress. So at SU for undergraduate students, that's a 2.0 or program minimum, and you need to complete at least 67% of the courses you attempt, and you need to file your FAFSA annually. The biggest part of maintaining your eligibility for financial aid will be that you are enrolled full time. Your financial aid is based off of full time enrollment, which is 12 credits or more. So in order to maximize your financial aid offer, be sure that you're enrolling in 12 or more credits every term. To really prepare you. Um, for the first billing cycle, just to give you all kind of a heads up of how we run billing at SU, know that billing invoices are generated monthly. So every month, students and their authorized third parties will receive an email notification letting you know that your billing statement is ready to view online. From there, we recommend that students log into their student account activity and view their activity for that quarter to view any charges and make any payments that are due. If there's ever any changes, we do email you and tell you to review your account activity. One super important note that I cannot stress enough is that only students and their authorized users will be able to make payments or view account activity. So if you're a student and you've got a parent supporting you or a grandparent, or maybe you've got a super awesome older sibling that's gonna help you work through the finance part of your education, you will want to make sure that you provide them with third-party proxy or authorized user access. A third party proxy has the ability to speak with student financial services. They can talk about your account balance, um, the award letter, and any required documentation that you have, whereas an authorized user has the ability to log in, um, view your billing, make payments, set up payment plans, see tax documentations, and they'll receive email notifications on billing invoices. 
Um, so really talk with your family at home and see who might need third party proxy authorized user access or both. If you'd like to, ner to learn more, I definitely recommend snapping a pic of the QR code, which will walk you through a step by step guide on how to give access to a supporter for either third party proxy authorized user access or both. Moving right along, something super important to keep in mind, not only for financial aid purposes, but also for billing, is that we are on a quarter system. So we bill students three times a year, um, at least, for tuition. For those of you that choose to participate in summer quarter, although not required, you will then, of course, receive a bill for summer quarter. For fall quarter, know that the bill is due September 20th and that we always provide the bill at least 30 days in advance. So for September, expect that that bill will come to you around mid-August so that you've got plenty of time to prepare, tie up any loose ends with paperwork or missing documents and be ready to go for fall. I know that was a lot. But lastly, I want to provide you with some next steps that'll really help get you prepared for fall. So right now, of course, is the time for outside scholarships. It's definitely the time to get on and complete that financial aid checklist while I've got you all thinking about it. And if you haven't already, be sure that you've submitted your confirmation deposit. After July 1st, it is loan application time. So if you're planning to participate in the Federal Parent Plus loan program, or if you're taking on a private educational loan, that is definitely the time to get started on those applications. For those of you that have a supporter that you'd like to give access to for either third party proxy or authorized payer access, after July 1st is the perfect time to get them set up in preparation for when bills go out mid-August. And mid-August, after you receive that first tuition bill, is a great time to get signed up for the payment plan or to begin applying for on-campus jobs. Lastly, I want to leave you all with our contact information. Please know that we are available for walk-in appointments if you're local or if you're planning to come to Seattle a little bit early. Know that you can email us. You can find tons of helpful information on our website and we are available for virtual appointments as well. Are there any questions in the chat, Niall, that we should go over? Yeah, I've got a couple here. Um, one question that we got was the financial aid checklist being required or asking if it is required. Um, I think you covered that actually though, so. Um, yes, absolutely. So the financial aid checklist is definitely a requirement. Um, so you'll want to definitely log into My Seattle U, go underneath your financial aid tab and view your checklist. If you've got any documents in there, you'll want to make sure that you'll complete those. Um, the only documents that may or may not be required is that if you're a student who is not planning to participate in one of the federal loan programs, but you've been offered loans, you're not required to complete that master promissory note or entrance counseling, but you will want to formally reject those loans. Um, so that we don't keep emailing you and reminding you to do paperwork. And then uh, one more we got um, is the out-of-pocket cost worksheet, where to find that or where to find your indirect and direct costs. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say that the answer to that question, is, to the second part of that question, is to view your out-of-pocket cost worksheet. Um, which will break down your direct cost and then your indirect cost, as well as your net price. So if you are logged into My Seattle U, you'll want to, from the left-hand side, click on your financial aid tab and then view your offer. On the right-hand side, then you'll see a resources tab. And under that resources tab, you'll find your out-of-pocket cost worksheet. Oh. It sounds like someone's already located it, which is great. Um, let's see. Are meal plans required for students exempted from living on campus? If you have been exempt 
formally through housing to not live on campus, then you are not required to have a meal plan. Um, for those of you that have not gone through the formal exemption process through our housing office, it is required um, for a two-year residency that includes a meal plan. So for your first and second year, unless you have that exemption in place. And then I think the last one that I'm seeing in here is, can we go back to the authorized user proxy um, screen so we can have people screenshot that? Yes, absolutely. Did we have any other questions? Anything that you all want to throw in the chat now, we're happy to answer. I'm going to throw in a uh, link to the on-campus job board. Um, I did see a couple questions about on-campus work study. Um, so I'll throw the job posting board into the chat here for those that are interested in that or have been awarded work study. Perfect. And I'm seeing a request for the second to last slide. Um, I'm assuming that that was the things you should know. So your next steps. Okay, Niall, are you seeing any additional questions? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I can just address them here. Um, so work study payments will go directly to the student paid just like a normal job. Um, so it's more for like a supplementary cost uh, in that instance. So uh, that is correct down there, uh, Tino. Um, if I choose to reject FAFSA, how do I do so? Um, and then the MTN and direct entrance counseling goes away. That's correct. So once you decline the FAFSA loan on your financial aid checklist, uh, the MTN and direct entrance counseling will, those requirements will go away. And you'll do that in my Seattle U underneath your financial aid tab. Um, you'll want to view your offer and it'll give you the option to reject those loans if you'd like. I see a great question on scholarships. I'm gonna kind of break this answer down into two parts. Um, so it's asking whether or not scholarship information is updated in real time. For any scholarship that you're, that you're receiving from Seattle University, that information is, up, is updated um, in real time, unless you receive an email from our office that says that an upload will take 24 to 48 hours. If you're speaking in terms of a private scholarship, we actually won't update that information on your offer letter until we receive that physical check from the foundation or organization that's providing you with the scholarship. Can you just address when to apply for work study jobs again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can definitely begin to peruse the job board in August. Um, if you'd rather wait until you get here in fall, that is definitely an option. Part of fall welcome student employment is always involved in that fall fair. Um, so if you'd like to wait until then and kind of get some hands on um, help applying to jobs and maybe working on your resume, that's definitely an option, but you'll have access starting in August. Okay, I think we are wrapping up with questions. Um, before we close out, I do want to do another quick poll with you all. Um, just to kind of see how we're feeling now that you've kind of gone through what I am coming to call student financial services boot camp, um, aka the survival guide. Um, I'm seeing a lot more people confident, which is great. Uh, 
I'm even seeing some totally confidence, um, which is super impressive. We're happy to see that. Awesome. And while folks are answering the poll, Niall, I do think we had a couple more questions pop in. Yes, we did. Um, so Seth is asking, um, it says the tuition day, due dates, it says the tuition is due on specific dates and is billed 30 days before that date. But if I remember correctly, you said that we would get billed monthly what is that billing for? So how does it work? Can you just kind of? Yeah, absolutely. So your first bill um, for the upcoming quarter will come 30 days to you in advance. So for instance, let's take the fall term. Bills are due September 20th. So around mid-August, we're going to provide, provide you with that first tuition bill. Um, each month, you're going to get an updated account statement. So for those of you that are participating in a payment plan, um, or for those of you that might have an, an additional charge pop on, um, maybe from housing or maybe from the health center, um, those charges might accrue monthly. And so we send you an updated monthly statement. That way, we can help you stay on top of your account. Um, and then this one might be a little bit in the weeds for this, but can you explain the federal unsubsidized loan more in depth? Yeah, absolutely. So the biggest difference between the federal subsidized loan and the federal unsubsidized loan is that the federal subsidized loan won't collect interest while you're in school. So that loan will, the government essentially subsidizes, so they pay for the interest on that loan until six months after you graduate when repayment begins. For the unsubsidized loan, that loan will begin to accrue interest immediately after disbursement and all the way through while you're repaying it. So in terms of what we would consider the best loan option, um, the subsidized loan would be the better loan of the two, um, but you do have the option to accept if you've been offered both you can accept just the subsidized or you can accept both the subsidized and the unsubsidized loan um, but both of those loans um, you don't repay until six months after graduation and then we had specifically for athletes moving in early do they pay housing prior Ooh, that is a great question. Um, for any athletes that might be in our session, definitely reach out to Student Financial Services. Um, it will depend on your team um, and whether or not you're taking coursework during the summer or if you're just moving onto campus. Um, so that will be very team specific. So it is best if you reach out to Student Financial Services and let one of our athletics counselors take a look at your specific situation. And then the final question that I see unanswered in here, um, apologies if I've missed anybody. Um, uh, can you send the link to where the recording will be uploaded in the chat? Yes, absolutely. Give me just one second. Um, I'm going to pop off of here really quick.